Hello, good morning or afternoon. How are you guys going? I think we're live. Everything is working fine from my end. Let me know if you can see me and you can hear me and we'll get started. Alrighty, hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. All good to go, cool. All systems go. Um, let me just bring in my Epic Pen very quickly. It's the only thing that I forgot to load. Um, where did I put it? Here it is. Alrighty, we are good to go. All right, so um, for today's stream, so what I thought I we could do is finalize this guy. <laughs> We've been doing it for like the past three streams, I think, and I'm getting sick of it <laughs> already. So we're gonna wrap it up here uh, with this stream. Um, I mean, at this stage, I would just add a few more details, like some tubing, some maybe insert meshes, that sort of thing and then call it a day and then send it to, um, you know, Keyshot or Maverick, which is something that I'm using more uh, recently. And yeah, I just finish it up there and take a, a screenshot or a quick render, uh, export some maps and then, you know, do a paint over if anything, uh, because this is gonna be a, a concept. So before I do that, um, I'm gonna take advantage of what we already have here in terms of uh, the polished surface of this mesh. And I'm gonna show you a couple more techniques Again, just if you wanna take it further, right? If you don't, if you wanna do a concept like I would do at this stage, then you you're pretty much done. You just need to do a few, you know, more details, maybe some add some scratches and indentation, that sort of thing. But pretty much done. Uh, but I'm gonna show you a few techniques if you wanna, in case you wanna take it a bit further. Um, Ivan. Deberías hacer un curso donde el premio sea el ingreso a tu curso, los resultados, un concurso donde, result, donde los, los premios sean el ingreso a tu curso, los resultados de los alumnos están brutales. Um, so yeah, Ivan, Ivan is mentioning that um, I should do a contest that the prize should be one of the, uh, like a spot in the extra mile course, um, which is fantastic. Um, to be honest, like the not not just because it's my course, I'm just saying the the um, the community that's been created around the the course is fantastic. Like the 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 students are incredible, and the and the community around it is is really really cool. Um, actually, well, thanks uh, thanks uh, to Ivan for mentioning it. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So, oh, actually, this guy here that I left <laughs> the 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 camera view, this one here on the top right. This is actually a character that we developed uh, on a couple of days ago uh, with the students. We did a mega, mega, mega stream uh, a whole day. It was like a live workshop for like almost nine hours and a half. And we went from nothing, from not even having an idea of what to do, all the way to um, rendering. So I'll show you the end result because it's pretty cool. Um, all right. So here, I, I just put it, posted it in Instagram, because uh, in the final I have a couple of things that I would like to do before finishing. So this is how we started. Mm. Come on, internet. Nope. Anyway, so this is how we started. We started doing some thumbnails, some sketches. This one right here on the top left is uh, the one that we end up using. So we started with this uh, sketch, then we move into blocking, which is not loading, but anyway, um, we went through the entire workflow, the entire um, process to produce this image, like the final render um, at the end of the nine hours mega stream. And it was a live workshop, so it was pretty cool. And some of the students have done amazing work. If I, let's see if I can show you something. Mm. I think it's at the end here.
yeah my internet is a little bit slow and I'm a little bit afraid that um it's affecting the stream so I'm just gonna leave it if you want to check it out just go to my Instagram page and there we go at the end of the student um, of the student post you can see so this one is one from Sonia uh, again she started from nothing uh, she's one of my students as well this is from John Derrico he's also uh, a, a student and he started this as well from from scratch so a pretty cool stuff um, coming out from the from the challenge so it's pretty exciting um, but yeah, so that guy is from here. Let me just reset, actually. So we have the usual stuff. Ah, there we go. Cool. Um, the other thing that Ivan mentioned is the contest, uh, and it's actually right on time because I'm about to release or I'm I'm about to announce the a massive contest that I'm setting up. I've been setting it up for the past weeks, um, just connecting a few people. And I just want to show you, I actually started testing something here in Photoshop. Uh, I want to show you the the judges so that you guys start to get excited. Just quickly in Photoshop. So this is the, the panels of judges, just so that you can um, get an idea of how awesome this is going to be. So we have Miguel Guerrero, who is also uh, a streamer, uh, Jama, uh, Magdalena, Pascal Blanche, Glauco Longhi, and Tim Kim. So, you know, there's not really any need to to talk any any further <laughs> um, about these guys. It's just like top notch. So uh, the, the contest is actually going to be really, really cool. And Tim King, he's one of my students, actually, and he is sponsoring one of the spots in the extra mile course so just to answer Ivan question or suggestion it's already in the motion it's just um, uh, I'm just finalizing a few things and then I'm gonna release that um, anyway I'm gonna stop that <laughs> and get into the stream because um, we haven't actually done anything in Zverish today all right so like I said I want to start detailing this guy polishing refine some of the surface and then uh, hopefully give you guys a few more techniques so um, I'm actually gonna concentrate on the head or just the the head which is the one that we've been you know tweaking <laughs> um, and 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 I want to show you that this has oh okay uh, anyway it this one has a a single poly frame or poly group sorry uh, except these areas right here so these areas um, we created these indentations these um, these pieces here. I believe I don't, I don't remember <laughs> I think they are part of a, a boolean operation that we did so that's why and and with booleans you end up with with pieces uh, when, whenever you extract or subtract or intersect different pieces you end up with different polygroups which is uh, genius so that you can do you know retopologize by polygroups or you know refine it using the polygroups that you generated so before getting into that, I'm going to give you a quick example of how that works and why we're going to uh, create some polygroups before moving into this stage. So I'm going to create a quick cube in here, right? Change, change the material. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this cube. And I'm just going to move it out of the way. And I'll show you in a second. Um, hey Andres, how's it going? Th thanks for joining us. Recky, <laughs> you, you survived, so um, no worries. <laughs> so Brecky is one of my students as well. He is, um, is it in, in fin no, Finland? Iceland, sorry, I forgot. Finland, Iceland. Anyway, he was like um, studying the, the mega stream that we did um, on the weekend like at, I don't know, really late at night <laughs> and he ended up going to sleep like at 6 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Um, crazy. Um, so anyway, I have a couple of uh, cubes just to give you an example of what I'm going to do. And each one of these cubes have a different polygroup, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the green one and I'm going to subtract it. All right. So I'm going to click on this icon here. And of course, nothing happens because I don't have the live booleans enabled. But as soon as I click on live booleans, you'll see if I toggle polyframe off that this is the effect that it's having. Um, this is great for many reasons. 
well, apart from the fact that we are boolean booleaning an object, uh, but the fact that we have two different polygroups allows us to keep the original one plus the polygroup that came from the subtraction. I'll show you in a second. But before I do that, actually, I'm gonna give you another another tip here. So this this um this cube has only one polygroup, but if I want to have more more than one polygroup, uh, what we can do is go to the polygroups tab here and I'm gonna group by normals so the default settings at 45 degrees are pretty reasonable and that should give you at least one polygroup per face if, it, if you don't get the, the exact result that I that I got here uh, you can change the this value the max angle maximum angle tolerance however masking by polygroups uh, sorry grouping by normals is pretty straightforward for a cube um, and, and what's great about this now is that when I do the booleans, I should get one, two, and three polygroups um, in the new boolean operation. So let's go ahead and boolean this out. Uh, I'm going to just create a folder so that I can do it within this tool. Right? So I have a cube here and another cube with multiple polygroups subtracting everything within a, a folder. I'm going to click on the cog icon here and I'm going to click on boolean folder. If I had any dynamic subdivision, I could actually, let's just do that. So I'm going to enable dynamic for this cube. So it's a little bit rounder. Uh, and if, if you want to keep that roundness of this cube, then what you need to do is click on boolean with subdivision or with dynamic subdivision so that uh, zebras know that you want to keep this dynamic subdivision, which currently is just a preview. So let's click on that. And done. That's the operation finished. And that's what we end up with. I'm going to turn off the lines because that's horrible. <laughs> um, and this is what I was trying to, to explain before. And, and it's important to get this concept right or, or understand a little bit of these steps so that we can move forward with the mecha head. And that's what we're going to do. So this is really, really useful because now we have the original polygroup and then we have these three polygroups that we can use to isolate. We can um, smooth by groups. Um, you know, we can retopologize by groups, um, a, a whole bunch of things. The most important thing in the process or in the workflow that we're using for the, the character is that because it's going to be a concept, it's going to be really easy to just assign different materials if we already have polygroups. So for example, I can just isolate just this bit and select this material make sure that I have material enabled and I'm gonna fill object right let's bring back the rest I can go ahead and select the green one for example um, select this other material fill object select this one fill object select this one fill object all right so basically what this means, of course, this um, the topology is not great, but what, that, what this means is that now we have four different materials applied to the different faces. And this is really good because once we export it, if we keep this, these materials or once we export it as an FBX or OBJ to another uh, rendering engine like Keyshot or any, any, any probably most of the, the render engines will work this way, uh, you can simply drag and drop a material to the material that we assign in, in in ZBrush. Um, so that's super handy. And that's the idea really why we want to, you know, understand this process a little bit before moving forward. So I just reassign a simple skin material so you can see what's happening here. Now the result or the, the topology basically is not ideal. And for these simple shapes, we can still make use of these polygroups. So if we want to do a retopology of this, of this mesh, and we want to keep all of these crisp edges, we can just do a zero mesh keeping the groups. Um, I'm basically giving you a quick rundown of some of the techniques that you could use uh, if you want to further refine the, you know, the more complex mesh, and then I'm going to get into some detailing. Um, let's see. So yeah, you can use keep groups. Uh, I'm just going to, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to keep groups. I'm going to make sure the smooth groups is uh, set to one, although all of these groups are pretty smooth, so there's no, no need really. So I'm going to set it to zero. Uh, this is something that you would use if you have like a very irregular border, but these ones are pretty straight. So let's leave it at, at zero. So there's no need to pre-compute that 
or like smooth these groups before running the serial mesh, uh, which is, if you leave it at one, is something that serial mesh will do uh, on its own. Um, I don't know if I'm talking too fast. I had like three, <laughs> three coffees this morning. I'm a little bit en <laughs> energized. Let's, um, let's go ahead and keep um, the same amount of topology. Let's leave adapt on. And I'm going to do a quick serial mesh. All right. Roughly speaking, it did a good job. Um, you see the inner side or the this part, it was really or like it did a pretty good job keeping all those edges crisps, crisps, crisp, but the rest of the edges, uh, we kind of like lost that. So I'm going to undo that. And now I'm going to also detect edges. And that should give me, um, it should keep these edges a little bit better. Um, this, this switch just tries to detect when there is like a, a change in the angle that is too abrupt. Um, it will try to keep that angle, hopefully. So yeah, pretty cool, right? Just by enabling that, that detect edges. So what that does is giving us a much better topology all around. And also, you know, as you notice, it gives us some other polygraphs so we can take advantage of that as well. Um, but yeah, that's... In a nutshell, that's what this process is. So this is the result of retopologizing quickly with serial measure after the um, uh, the Boolean operation, which generally speaking gives you a weird topology and well, not weird topology, um, whatever topology is needed to to compensate and, and recreate the shapes and maintain the topology uh, in other areas. But this is a pretty decent result for what we created. And believe it or not, this might be, I mean, this seems simple, but it's a complex topology for the software to, you know, to understand. Uh, and even though it is complex, we got a pretty good result. Um, you can also try the same thing without adapt on. Adaptive on this switch here, uh, what it does is will adapt the size of your mesh. Let's say, um, yeah, let's do it with this color. Let's say that you have a couple of you know, scratches here and some, maybe some indentations, some crevices, and then you leave adaptive on. So what adaptive on, adaptive on is going to do is going to remesh the entire thing, but where, where it finds, where Sirius finds like little indentations or crevices and things like these ones, is going to add smaller polygons and then obviously connect them with larger polygons. Right, all around. So for example, in this flat area here, uh, I'm going to do it with a different color, right? So in this area right here, you end up with polygons or faces that are much bigger because you don't need smaller faces to describe details. It's pretty flat, but um, at the bottom here, you end up with polygons that are much smaller. Uh, and that's what this adaptive option gives you because this is pretty reasonably the same, <laughs> the, um, the cube. Uh, you might try it also with adaptive. I'm going to do the same thing, see what happens. Doesn't doesn't do much, maybe straighten up some lines. I can keep doing this and now I get something that looks even better. Okay, and that is just keeping the same. So like the, the switch that says same so that we can keep the same amount of topology, um, but you know, refining the, the rest of the topology. So this is not too bad at all. Um, there's a bit of, you know, skewing in here. Let's try it one more time. And that sort of like keeps refining it. Uh, but you can also, now that we have these, these polygroups, you can isolate one, mask, invert the, the, the visibility and invert the mask. And then you can use the smooth brush just to straighten this up. Um, but that's about it. Let's see what happens if we also do some deformation. Let's go to poly, polish by groups. So polish by groups is going to polish everything but respect the difference between polygroups. Polish crisp edges if you want to round it. But you know, um, I'm going to undo that. So this is pretty, pretty clean. Um, there's a bit of bendiness or you know, roundness here is not perfect. Um, but you know, there's things that you can do. I just want to point out that this is uh, an automatic process. So it's pretty decent for, for that. Um, so again, the, the process could be Dynamesh, Sculptress Pro, uh, whatever you want to create your sketch, which is what we currently have in our Mecha. We have a very, you know, Dynamesh uh, object. 
And then you move into booleans, right? And then once you do the boolean, you can go ahead and do something like this one, sorry. Solo mode. Um, with the serial measure with those um, those switches and those settings that I just showed you. <laughs> I'm just checking the chat break. Yeah, from 10 p.m. to 7:30 a.m. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's an insane all nighter. But yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun to to do the entire workflow in just a, a very tight de deadline. Um, does detect edges creases also? Yep, that's why we end up with the creasing and the different polygroups. In fact, once you do the detect edges, you can turn it off. So you can turn off detect edges and then you can keep creases so that instead of detecting new edges, it's just gonna keep the creases that, was, uh, that were generated beforehand with this process. Hey, Mr. Sanson, how's it going? Hey, Carlos. Uh, yeah, you can apply different materials to a different object. So like, like I said, you can isolate the polygroups if you want. And that's the idea of this process. That's why I'm explaining this, because that's what I would like to do for the make ahead, assign different materials to different pieces. That is in the case that you don't have. Um, if you go back to the previous to the previous stream, I gave you a few techniques that you can actually separate the pieces and work individually if you want to do something a little bit more polished um, and if you want to retopologize and make it, you know, a little bit better. Um, but in this case, I'm going to keep everything solid within one piece or mostly one piece. So the process is kind of like what I just showed you, uh, assigning polygroups in different ways to, um, to assign materials. Now, there is another way that you can assign materials as well. So right now I have this skin material selected and I'm gonna turn off polyframe so that you can see it. Um, what you can do is, let's, let's just take this standard brush and I'm gonna clone it so that I don't mess up the original. I'm gonna turn off lazy mouse, I don't need that. I'm gonna turn off C add so that it doesn't affect the volume. And here I'm gonna turn on material. So basically what I have now is a brush that is only going to add material to the, to the object. So if I select, let's say this material, and start painting, it should, hang on, mRGB, must have like a texture or something, oh, okay, that's why, yeah, <laughs> sorry, so um, let's just do, do that again, I had a texture on, I'm gonna fill this object with this material. You can select the material now and then start painting. So I'm literally just painting the areas that I want with this material. And I can keep choosing other materials, you know, to paint different areas. Um, ultimately, this is something that you can do if you have a lot of topology, because as you can see, what Sirius is doing is just filling the actual quads or the actual polygons with that material. So if you had more topology, you can do it more refined. And that's why I could use that with the Dynamesh because we have plenty of topology. So uh, I can go ahead and do this a couple of times. I'm gonna delete lower. So now I have more topology. And when I apply, uh, let's say this material, then it's gonna be a little bit more refined that border. Actually, this is, I'm gonna show you something that is not, <laughs> is not relevant for the technique or, but it's a cool tip. Um, a cool trick, actually. So if you go to the render palette, right? So one of the downsides of using this technique of applying the materials to areas is that uh, you're constrained to the amount of topology. It's not like you can fade one material into another, right? Because it is not the same as poly paint. It's not painting vertex. It's just actually filling an entire quad with material. So um, yeah, so that's one of the downsides, but um, in the render, I haven't used this for a while, so I'm gonna do a quick render. So this is the result of the render. Um, actually, um, let's just, I'm gonna toggle the chat for a second so I can put this here and then you have it as a reference. 
and you can see it. All right, so in the render properties, I believe it is. Let me just figure out where it is because I totally forgot. Yes, so render properties. Um, you'll see in, under the render properties, there is a slider called material blend radius and by default it's a zero. But if you turn this up, let's say, say by two, this will increase the render time because it's a, it's a process that happens after, well, a render time basically. And obviously it only works for ZBrush. If you export it, um, it's not gonna work. This is a, a render setting within ZBrush. Now, if I do PBR, you'll see that I'm getting a bit of blendiness between the materials. Let's just exaggerate it a bit more. I'm gonna go for 12. And let's do BPR. Like I said, the more um, <laughs> the more blending or the higher the radius, the longer it's gonna take to render. But now you can see it's start to, starting to blur these areas. Then you also have these smooth enhanced edges, edges. So if I set this material to zero or one, and I'm gonna take these smooth enhanced edges or enhanced edges to two. And actually I have to give it give it some radius. Come on. Render. Right. So it's going to, it's kind of like an anti-alias, but just playing with these two values, uh, especially with the material blending radius, you'll end up with something that it looks pretty cool. So if you would like to keep your render within ZBrush and do something pretty cool, uh, just assigning materials, this is one way to go about it and it's pretty cool. Anyway, that doesn't have to do anything with what we are doing. Um, uh, let's see the chat. Mr. Sanson, speaking about mentality, do you ever give up on model projects and start a new one? Um, yep, <laughs> guilty. Yes, I do that. Um, I used to do it more than recent, like more recent years. And I believe that is part of getting, getting a little bit more comfortable with the pre-production of a project. So this is something that actually uh, we talked about in the, um, in the live stream that we did with the students, uh, which basically the more time that you spend collecting references, inspiration, you know, preparing your project, that that is gonna have a, a huge impact in the longevity of that project and whether or not you're gonna drop it or not. Because if you just don't collect as many references maybe or on inspiration and then just start working on something, you just go halfway through, it's like, ah, this, is not, this is not going anywhere or it feels awkward or maybe the anatomy is not right if you're doing a, I don't know, a quadruped or something. Um, whereas if you spend a lot of time just refining the idea, uh, the concept, the the sketches, the, you know, finding the references, lots of references, lots of um, inspiration, um, then you are more confident, or I, I'll feel that I'm more confident to say, okay, this is something that in my head, it looks really cool. And I have a, a vision of what it is. I wanna stick to it until, until the end, um, but again, I'm guilty of dropping projects halfway through, to be honest. That's that's the case. Uh, in fact, lately I've been trying to um, to play with a different approach of working on projects. So right now I'm working on three, three or four personal projects, um, rather big projects, as in complex uh, projects. And it's good because it's not like I'm, I can finish one straight away or faster, but um, working on four different projects, it allows me to play around with a bunch of different things at once and I don't get bored with only one. Um, if you're just studying or if you're not, um, you know, 100% confident with your skills in a particular software, I wouldn't recommend to do that. I would recommend to stick with one um, and then just push it all the way to the end. But as you get experience, working on multiple projects actually is really, really handy. So I'm working on this Star Wars base or inspire character. So that's kind of like a sci-fi thing, it has drapery. It's kind of like a, in, a Z, in a scene, there's a robot as well. So that's one, I'm working on another character that's kind of like a mechanic and I'm exploring clothes and, you know, character that's fully clothes. Um, I'm working on, on another one, which is my take on um, Gomez Adams. Um, and I'm basing it roughly in Rami Malek as well as, you know, there's some hints of Henry Cavill and a couple of other actors. So it's like a mash of actors, not necessarily a likeness. Um, I actually shared 
still have it here. So this is another project. So this guy. Um, and the idea is to continue the series that I started with Uncle Festa. So Uncle Festa was uh, based on Larry, I forgot his, his last name, from the Three Stooges. So the, I'm doing the same thing. So this is my work in progress in one of those projects um, based on Rami Malek. Um, again, it's not 100% Rami Malek. I'm also taking hints of the facial expressions and the facial features of um, Henry Cavill and a couple of other actors. Uh, and it's going to, it's try, I'm trying to do like a younger version of Gomez Adams, maybe like um, like if they, they were going to make a movie like a prequel before he met Morticia or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> that's another project. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I sometimes branch out too, too far. I, I work on uh, a lot of projects and that also helps me to, you know, work on different things. I work with li on likeness, then I work on like high frequency detail spores, then I go into sci-fi world. Um, another one that I'm working on is, uh, there's another one, I forgot already, see? Um, it's more organic, I'm pretty sure. Do you, can you export a uh, keyshot and, and change it? Yeah, that's essentially what I'm going to do. So once you export it with different materials, you can assign different materials in keyshot. That's exactly what I'm doing. Cool. All right, so <laughs> let's get back into the stream. We haven't, we have talked a lot and we haven't done much. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you the next step. Before I get into booleans and insert meshes, I wanna assign different polygroups at least to certain areas. And I can do that in a couple of ways. I can mask an area and then just assign a polygroup. So for example, um, hmm, let's just use this one. So I'm gonna use the mask lasso and I'm gonna go ahead and mask this area, right? And then I can go ahead and invert the mask and refine mask and then use the mask pen to also keep refining this. Now this, this might work in this area because it is not very well defined in terms of the, the edges. This is still super sketchy. But this is not what we're gonna do, don't worry. <laughs> this is not the the workflow I'm gonna show you. I just wanna show you that the it is possible to do it. So you can totally do it if the other method doesn't work. Alright, so um also let me refine this. This is something that you have to keep in mind that if you use the mask lasso, it will do it based on the camera. So uh you might end up with areas that are masked that you don't want to, or unmasked. But let's say, let's say that I'm happy with this, right? So just by masking this area, if I hold Control and W, that gives me a polygroup in this area, which is pretty nice. Now, the problem with do it, doing it like this way with the masking option is that it might not give you the exact, you know, let me just undo that actually. I'm gonna refine the masking here because it wasn't great. All right, so Control W, that gives me a new polygroup, but you'll see the edges are super jagged. There's no, there's not a smooth line. Um, after you're doing this process, you can go to Polish uh, by Groups. This is gonna take a while, just because we already have a mesh that is pretty dense. Um, but as you can see, it smooths a little bit of the edges here, but it also does a little bit around, you know, the other groups uh, or the other parts of the mesh. So I'm gonna undo that. So I wanna keep everything crisp. So instead of using this, there is a brush under the brushes. So um, let's go to the brush section here. Um, this one comes with ZBrush. So you can go to, mm, where are they? A smooth brushes. Yep. And there's one called the smooth groups. This one here. So if I load this one, 
now is going to be my new smooth group, uh, smooth brush, smooth groups. So if I hold shift, I access this brush. And what this brush is going to do is basically smooth the difference between the groups. So if I get closer here, uh, you'll see that it tries to maintain the surfaces, but smooth the polygons. So holding shift with a smaller brush size, maybe. Right. So I can manually smooth out these groups, which is great. It's like using the same um, polish by groups, but more localized, as in just using the, the brush what you wanted to. So it's super handy. All right. Let's just select the standard brush. So that is one way to do it. If you have like large um, pieces that are very organic, you can use this technique. Just mask what the areas that you want and then Control W, assign a polygroup. Okay, so the one that I'm gonna use at least for some of these more um, hard surface areas, um, probably not at the back because it's not very well defined, but here is a awesome plugin that comes with ZBrush called Polygroup It. Um, and not a lot of people use this, this um, uh, well, I don't know, depends, <laughs> really, I don't really know. <laughs> but I don't see a lot of people using it or showing how they use it. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna toggle, uh, that's not what I wanted. I'm gonna toggle the thumbnail and the camera off. I can bring in the chat again. Uh, and Polygroup it would be under the C plugin. And this one right here, Polygroup It. So what I'll do is I'm going to click on Polygroup It and that's gonna launch a separate UI. Let's just wait for Polygroup It to finish. I haven't used it since I updated ZBrush, so hopefully, hopefully it's gonna work, to be honest. Should work, yep, yeah. all right. So if you click Polygroup It, this is the new interface that will Open up, Let's increase the size of the screen. Um, and if you never use Polygroup it before, is again, it comes with ZBrush. It's done by the ZBrush guys uh, with Pixelogic. So it works in the same way. Um, you have, like, you, you can navigate in the same way at least, and you can just rotate around. Um, and the, the great thing about this. Clear. Delete. Uh, the great thing about this one is that you can click on these seats and then you can extend the reach of the seats. So for example, um, if I want to polygroup just this part here, I can click in this area, whatever, wherever I want, click on this area, and then I create this little dot, which is the seat. And then you have the, the reach, which at the moment is at zero, but if I increase it, you see straight away it just starts to pick up based on the, the changes in the surface. How cool is that? And it basically did whatever I, I you know what I wanted, which is this um, this polygroup. I'm gonna keep increasing the reach a little bit so that it grabs most of it. It might not be perfect. Oops, it's too much. All right. It's not, it's not necessarily perfect, like it's not grabbing these edges right here, but it's not, it's, it's not a problem. That's something that you can do uh, later on. Um, you can also grow or shrink from here. So for example, if you click grow, that basically covers that, that issue that I showed you. Um, this one here as well, we can see if growing it helps. No, let's shrink it. Um, again, this one might not be, might not be, um, might, might be easier to just do it after, uh, but all I want to show you is that with a little click and just a slider, we have covered pretty much everything that I wanted um, to assign a polygroup to. So it's pretty awesome. Then um, I'm going to click on this little area here and that will create another seed. And maybe we can also well, apply symmetry after. From this side. Oh yeah, this side did it. All right, so apply symmetry. Hmm. All 
Oh no. <laughs> that's not the one. That's not the one I wanted to do. Ah. Uh, hang on. I have to do it again. I screwed up. All right. Let's grow. Okay, so that's one. Um, we can go ahead and do another one just by clicking on a new place, create an, a new seed essentially. And of course, this one is too much. I just want to get maybe this whole area. So let's just reduce the reach. Perfect. That is actually awesome. Uh, let's grow that a little bit, a bit more. All right, so um, what I just did there was to grow that and you'll see sort of like going or like spilling into other areas that I don't want to, but it doesn't matter because um, at the end of the day, I'm just going to add a new seed to generate another polygroup here. So I can click on this one and you'll see it just sort of like covers that as well. Um, and I'm happy with this one actually. I don't need to do anything with this. I want to try to do it a little bit faster now that I explain what the concept is and don't worry if like all of these areas here are not perfect I'll show you what to do after I just want to get a few things right all right maybe one here and you can just reposition the the seats by the way you can just click on the on the little seat and move it around uh, there's a shortcut to delete them. I think it was Control, or Shift, Alt. I forgot what it is, what it is, but you can delete them if you want. Let's do it again. There we go. I'm going to do another one here. Excellent. Grow that. Another one here. Grow that. So you see, it's super easy. Maybe that's too much. Grow that. So just in a matter of seconds, we can you know, define some polygroups. Of course, they're not going to be perfect. We, I mean, you can make them look much better within the polygroup tool, but I'll, I'll show you how to do it and fix it afterwards. And I'm just working on one side because, um, because then I'm just going to do a, a mirror and well, it's just going to be faster at least for this stream. So I don't spend too much time in this one. Okay, I think we're getting closer. I'm gonna do a full polygroup for this one, to be honest. I'm not too fast. Um, maybe this one is gonna be different. Hmm, something like that. Mm, all right, and one thing here there we go uh, where where else we might need all right just doing the last ones but again it's just clicking and maybe dragging and of course you can click on the seed and just edit the the reach again this one right here I'm gonna delete that one Sorry, delete that one. Do it again. There we go. And one more here. All 
All right, I think we're pretty close. Again, I, I only worked on one side. Uh, you can apply symmetry, uh, but I think because I worked on this side, it's just gonna apply it. It's not gonna give me the, the, the result I want. I should have worked on the other side and applied to the other one. Uh, but anyway, we have a pretty decent set of, poly of uh, polygroups. They're not clean by any means. Um, so once you finish with this, sort of like initial state of applying the seeds with polygroup it and then tweaking the reach of each seed, um, what you can do is now click on extend. So that's the one that I clicked before. So extend is going to take all of these polygroups that you created and it's gonna f basically fill <clears throat> the areas. So um, you can go to extend and it's gonna try to fill those areas. So that's, um, you know, that's one way to go about it. And that's that's totally fine. We can keep refining this. Let's see. Um, let's scroll. Let's see. Let's see. Hang on a second. So um, if I extend this, mm, yeah, we we might have to clean this up. So the, the extend is just gonna give us a polygraph for all this area. Um, it's it's all right. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we'll just wait until polygroup it, give us the polygroups for this guy. And then we can start like uh, refining those polygroups. But uh, at least having this initial setup of, of polygroups is gonna be way easier to assign materials later on. Also, the reason I'm doing this before I do any booleans or any insert meshes is because like I showed you at the, at the beginning with the cube, any Boolean is gonna give me um, its own set of polygroups once the Boolean is completed, and every insert mesh as well is gonna come with its own polygroups. So um, as long as I have the base already set up with polygroups, then the next stage is much easier to just drag and create details or um, add Booleans. So that's the reason why. Um, this is a relatively heavy mesh, so let's just wait until polygroup it finishes. I don't want to touch the screen because it might it might crash. Um, another thing is that once this is done and you clean the polygroups, you can also use those polygroups to guide the series mesher and create a, a pretty clean mesh based on on these um, polygroups that you generated with the polygroup. Um, so if there is any questions, guys, about this process or anything else, um, maybe this is a good time to uh, for me to answer or to read the chat just while we wait until Polygroup is finished. Um, did you already separate all the panels? No, there's is this still the same mesh. There's no panels. It's a single mesh, uh, a single subtool. Um, I'm not going to separate them. Like I said, I showed you, I showed some some of the techniques in the previous stream on how to do that and how to separate it and how to clip areas and refine, maybe uh, retopologize certain things, uh, which I'm not going to do. This is why I'm doing the polygroups. Now, if you clean the polygroups and you make the polygroups look really nice, um, again, very well defined, you can totally separate them, uh, separate the, the panels. So you can split by groups and then you'll end up with polygroups for every single bit that you assign a polygroup to then you can retopologize every single part um, and it's going to be much easier, much, much, much easier for the serial mesh to, you know, retopologize a single area and then you can extrude it uh, with the C modeler, for example, and then create that, that mesh or the thickness for that mesh. Um, but that's, that's about it. And this is taking longer than usual. I'm a little bit worried that it's not going to do it. Hello. I don't know how to pronounce your uh, nick nickname, your tag, Micher, Micherich Torik. Uh, welcome to the stream. So yeah, <laughs> this is taking a, a while, but um, while this finishes, um, it shouldn't take that long. I don't know why it's taking so long, but while this thing finishes, um, I'm gonna show you something else that I'm working on that is super exciting. So if you go to my Instagram page, just uh, search for Pablanda, then um, you will see this thing. And this is super cool. 
is something that I've been working for the past few weeks, uh, researching, and um, I've done a, a lot of research and, you know, testing. I even have, like, you know, actual clay to play around with. Um, I actually use these bits. I have a bunch of other stuff in here, um, you know, to, to understand the, the behavior of the material a little bit more uh, and, you know, generating some maps. So basically, this what I have here is just a, a little preview of something that I'm preparing and I'm hoping to uh, release this week. So it's going to be uh, a bunch of PBR textures, PBR materials, um, or not materials, just like the textures, texture sets that you can apply to use with any mesh. Um, that is one thing. And the other thing is just a bunch of um, extra stuff like to present your model as if it is uh, real clay. Um, I don't know if I have something ready here because I could give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on. Um, where is it? Because this is taking <laughs> this is taking way too long, um, so I'll give you a sneak peek on what I'm working on. There we go. So this is a this is a quick sculpt that I did in ZBrush. Uh, this is just a ZBrush screenshot, and I'm using all the the brushes and and everything that comes with the pack that I'm going to be releasing soon. Um, this one, for example, is a pretty cool close up to what you can get from the brushes as well as using the combination of the materials that I just showed you. Um, this is rendered in this is real time actually. This is done in Marmoset Toolbox Three. Um, so pretty cool stuff that uh, will help you generate a real, no real time, sorry, the, the real feel of clay. Um, it might not be useful for everyone. I'm just doing it because I love the, you know, the roughness and the raw visuals that uh, the real clay might give you in a 3D space. Uh, but it's really hard to get those imperfections of the real world in 3D, right? Because 3D is just mostly perfect. Um, here is an example of something already rendered with the materials as well as all the, the serious stuff. Um, the the pack that I'm about to release as well also comes with this, um, the base with a different a set of textures. So you can present your model as if it was like real clay and all that, which is pretty cool. Uh, anyway, this is something that I showed at the beginning, the judges, the panel of judges for the upcoming contest, uh, which Pixelogic is also a sponsor. So there you go. So. I'm not going to tell you exactly what the prices are yet, uh, but Pixelogic is one of the sponsors, so you can imagine. Um, Wacom as well. So uh, pretty pretty interesting stuff. We have an amazing panel of judges that are going to be judging your work if you participate, which is free as well, of course. And the prices are incredible. Like I said, Pixelogic is a sponsor. Wacom as well. The 3D Concept Artist is also a sponsoring. Um, so you're going to get a chance if you win to join the extra mile course as well. So anyway, I don't know what's happening with this. <laughs> I'm gonna just click on the screen. Maybe that's something that I haven't done. Uh, let's see what happens. Ah, <laughs> so you you could have just, you know, click on the screen <laughs> and that would be it. Sorry. Um, yeah, <laughs> we were waiting for no reason. Anyway, we got the polygroups, which is what we wanted. <laughs> um, we got the polygroups, so now I have them in one side. What I'll do is I'm gonna mirror it and then mirror and weld. Cool. So now we have polygroups in both sides. So I actually want to keep the inner polygroups. That's a, a an actually a really a really good thing, just because we can assign to the this one. This polygroup. Let me isolate it. Um, so we can assign to this polygroup. Um, I don't know, just a, a really dark material, for example, and we get all of these details straight away. How cool is that? So, yeah, um, of course, we can clean things up a little bit more. Um, like I said, there are certain things that I might not, I might not do, uh, just because this is going to be a concept, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So um, I'm going to use the mask pen. 
and there are different ways to do it by the way uh, but for example all of these lines in here these are this these ones right here actually should be part of so these ones these little pieces of polygons all of these ones they actually should be part of this polygroup right not not the kind of like the indentation groups right similar to this to this all of these areas right so this is the kind of like the next stage of cleanup um, we are about one hour in so I'm gonna do it really quickly just to show you how it is um, I'm not gonna bother too much about doing this because I can do a paint over later uh, but just so you know how to tweak it um, and then I'm gonna move on to the the details okay so if I hide this what I would do in this case is hold control with the mask pen and I'm just going to mask these bits and this is just a again there are many ways to do it this is my probably simplest approach that I can show you so I'm just refining that those areas of the polygroups all right so all I did here is just mask those bits that should be part of the polygroup and I'm gonna assign a new one okay so now there are two polygroups in there and now I can go ahead and hide this one which is the one that I just assigned invert the selection hide this one invert the selection and now I have these two polygroups in here I can go ahead and hold control and W and now we have a single polygroup there's a tiny one here that I forgot so let's just mask this one repeat the process polygroup and now we can hide the ones that we want and assign a polygroup so that's a, a quick way to clean this up and now we have this let's go ahead and repeat the process here so that you know exactly what I did there so I'm just going to refine these edges polygroup it hide hide this one sign a single polygroup I should already actually let's clean this a bit better polygroup there's a few of them here that are a little bit messy so I'm gonna mask this out uh, the, the good thing about this process of just refining it is that you don't have to be very precise with the mask it's just like covering the polygroups that you want to um, to tweak really so it doesn't have to be super precise just a quick pass you already have the the main sort of polygroup the hard part is done basically so polygroup isolate hide inverse oops invert the selection oh, come on assign polygroup so as you can see that's um you know that's that's the next step of the process it should be pretty straightforward like I said you can also get this much cleaner from the polygroup it um, plugin so just keep that in mind I just want to refine this slightly so repeating that process in there All right, so yeah, you'll see that's a it's a pretty simple way to do it. Um, I'm gonna actually refine this one as well. Polygroup, isolate, isolate, 
assign. Okay. So again, you can follow the same process that I just did to clean this up um, in any way you want to. Like these ones right here probably need some some clean up, um, but I'm gonna leave it like this. Again, I actually don't mind that you see a bit of this because this could be kind of like a scratch material. You know, if I make the this polygroup like metal uh, and this plastic or something, these little bits and pieces that stick out uh, could be part of the part of that. Um, so the next thing I would like to do is do a quick polish by groups. Now that we have groups, it should give us or it should keep everything a little bit more crisp. So I'm going to do polish by groups. There we go. It did um, smooth things out a little bit, but the, the poly groups are a little bit better. All right. So I'm happy with this. Again, um, if it was a concept, uh, sorry, if, you, if it wasn't a concept, I'll probably spend more time uh, at least doing the polygraphs. But for now, I think it is very, very easy. Um, hey, Andrew, how's it going? Cool. So now that we have this, let's just start with, I'm going to do a quick save, actually. I haven't done that for a while. Oh no. Why is he saving on do history? No, oh, it's gonna be annoying. Just let me fix that straight away. Alright. So I'm going to duplicate this head and put it into the original files uh, folder. I now have the same duplicated so in case I make uh, I mess messed up this one or, or whatever. I can just come back. Um, all right. So now that we have these, we can start working with the booleans. So I'm going to show you a, a very simple technique, uh, which probably you've used or have seen before, uh, which is having a dummy object, a dummy file, like a cube or something like that, that we can use to subtract. And then into that cube, we can click and drag to insert the uh, certain IMM brushes or, or meshes that will subtract the geometry. So to do that, it's actually really simple. I'm going to append um, anything. You can append whatever you want. So a helix, for example. And I'm going to turn it into a Q cube, which for you guys should be under the initialize palette. Click on Q cube, and that's that's your cube right there. So in solo mode, I'm going to go ahead and scale this one down and then just put it inside the, the head. quite tiny there we go so it doesn't the size doesn't matter as long as it's within the the mesh or so that you don't see it or you can actually put it up or, or down um, as long as you don't see it because it can get in the way uh, so now we have this dummy file so this is going to be at the bottom actually of all the meshes that I want to subtract from right and actually let's just put it here under the, the head because we're not working on the other ones so the head and these uh, cylinders. All right. So this one, this uh, cube, I'm going to set it to subtract, right? So it's subtracting inside of the mesh. It's not subtracting anything. And we can turn on live booleans in just a second. So let's go ahead and select a brush. And I'm going to use one from Silver. So IMM uh, boolean. Uh, you won't see it there, but it's this one. It's called IMM boolean. So this one is um, a mesh that has a set of meshes optimized for Boolean operation. That, mean, that means that uh, most of them are actually subtracting an area. Okay, so I can go ahead and use, for example, this one, this oval. It's pretty cool. Um, maybe here, I can click and drag. And you see it just drags like any other insert mesh, but it's actually embedded into the, into the surface. I'm going to activate symmetry. Right, so nothing um, doesn't doesn't look great right now. But if I enable booleans, you'll see what is happening. It's just give me that very nice um, subtraction over the surface, just because I have this uh, enabled. And this is something that I am applying to the cube. 
Um, I don't know how this is going to affect the stream, having live booleans on. Um, it hasn't given me great results in the past. So in case a bit laggy straight away. Um, so I'm going to use these live booleans on and off just to show you. But if you're not, I mean, if I wasn't streaming, it would be pretty straightforward. Uh, for you guys, if you're following along, for example, it's, you know, you can leave live booleans on. I'm going to turn it off for the time being and then select something else. Maybe these, these holes, this is going to be pretty cool here. trying to figure out um, this I mean the the concept behind these uh, the application of these details is roughly the same as what we spoke about a few streams ago um, it's, it's very easy to add details it's just a matter now of, of figuring out whether you actually need those details in the areas that you're placing them uh, let's do a quick boolean or like preview so it's looking good so we have now those indentations these holes in here um, let's do a few more. Um, this uh, hemisphere is actually really good. In fact, I think that the simpler the geometry, the much like the, the better it will look, <laughs> because sometimes it could become a very, very complex object, and just doesn't go with the with the design or sort of overrides a little bit the design. And I don't think it's good. Um, this is something important actually. So when you click and drag a, an IMM brush or um, curves, for example, a series is going to automatically, by default, mask out the rest, which is great, right? So that allows you to use the Gizmo 3D to just reposition whatever you have uh, before clearing the mask. Now, this works really well with rotation and translation, but if you want to um, scale, you'll see that it's doing it based on the center line, right? So it's not it's not scaling the object on its own or like locally. It's just centering to the center of the of the world or the center line, uh, because we're using symmetry. But if you have um, if you enable this local symmetry, it's basically gonna do it um, with within the object. So for you guys, that should be on the transform palette. Uh, this one right here, local symmetry. So I'm gonna enable that, and now I can use the scale based on the local symmetry of the object. Cool. Let's see how that looks with booleans. Perfect. So this part of the process is really, really cool. Um, and with booleans, it's just, you know, it's just a breeze. Um, I'm going to use um, this, this panel hatch here um, in a couple of areas. I can actually split a bit of the, the panels, for example. So I'm just dragging it right in the middle of these two panels. And that creates that sort of hatch. Um, is pretty cool. Um, now, another good thing about this process is that because I have live booleans, I can actually move these pieces and place them in the right um, in the right position or, or rotation. So hopefully this is not going to crash because I have booleans enabled. But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty slow for me. It's really it's, a, it's really hard to do it, like eyeballing it, if you can actually see the live boolean. But again, it's something that happens when I'm streaming, unfortunately. Although if if I'm not streaming, it's it's really easy. But for some reason, this specific process is is not great when I'm streaming. Anyway, let's leave it like that. So this is what no, let's not leave it like that. That's better. Cool. So I'm going to clear the mask and I'm going to go into solo mode to show you what we've been doing. So at this at this point, all we're doing is inserting all of these meshes within this cube, uh, which is hidden within the, the head. Uh, but because, you know, if we have everything enabled, as in the surface, we can drag in these bits and pieces within that surface. 
Uh, I'm gonna actually use this hemisphere. I quite like this, the simplicity of these objects in certain areas. So maybe here. And again, the, the cool thing about all of this is that you can, if you had live booleans enabled, you can just play around with the placement of these objects um, and see in real time how they're affecting the model. I'm just like toggling on and off so that I don't mess up the, the stream, but that's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of indentations. This indent shallow uh, is just a, a really good way to break up the paneling a bit more. So for example, around here, if I wanna add an extra set of um, paneling, let's see, maybe not that one. I'm gonna drag it over the surface instead. Let's see, right, so that sort of thing, that's what I was trying to achieve. Um, I'm gonna repeat the same process. I'm gonna keep using this hemisphere in some areas, or not that one actually. Let's use um, let's use this one, the joint create, joint create. So that is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna use that in a couple of areas as well. That looks good. All right, um, this one is one of my favorites, this ball raider. Uh, I can, I'm gonna show you here what it does. Let's put it here. It just creates this, <laughs> this really cool sort of sphere looking thing, but yeah, probably not go uh, well in there. This looks like a skull, the back, interesting. Anyway, um, if I put, for example, this one here at the top, let's see. Hmm, cool stuff. I think I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna push this out a bit. Ah, uh, no, it was fine the way it was. Right, now um, you notice that this specific object has uh, you know, very faceted polygons. That is also a thing that we can toggle at the end. So it's gonna be much faster we could keep dragging at this stage, but uh, if we wanted to, we can just enable dynamic subdivision and that will simplify this and make it really, really smooth and still works with Boolean. So all of these details are gonna be very, very smooth when we apply them, but I'll do it after. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, this cylinder cutting is actually pretty cool. Um, again, another way to break up paneling. So like that. I'm gonna push it in a bit more. That's cool. All of these ones, I mean, I'm just placing a bit, a bit, these details are a little bit random um, just to show you a bunch of options, but um, I probably won't use them all if I'm doing something. I mean, this one is not too bad. But I wanna keep, I wanna keep it simple, not too, not overdo it with these um, with these details because, like I said, it's a it's an easy way to do it. I mean, it's an easy it's easy to add details and it's easy to also fall into the trap of just adding details for the sake of adding them, uh, and they actually not adding anything to the design. They just become distractions. So, but yeah, these ones are not too bad, and that's also another way, another reason why I like to keep things uh, simple in terms of the the objects that I can add. 
These ones are really cool to add some more panelings or some more panel effect, like this. Uh, and I'm going to show you something else. So if I, this is just a line basically of, of a panel. If I go into live booleans, it's just adding this little bit because this is, um, you know, it's just a straight line. Now, I don't know how much geometry this has. So let me just see. Uh, it doesn't have too much geometry. So I was going to show you a way that you can project. Anyway. Doesn't matter. I'm going to use these uh, simple indents to polish this area with details, basically. Just a tiny bit of indentation there, and you can push it down. Okay. So I'm essentially using this one as a way to, to generate extra paneling. Not necessarily adding details, just cutting through the model. And we can add some uh, insert meshes afterwards in there. Okay, a torn hatch, let's see. This one might be good around this area. I'm totally overdoing the, the details, but as long as you, you get the idea. Uh, maybe this one that is not very well defined, I'm going to replace it with that, that hatch effect. Um, I'm going to push it in a bit more. Cool. All right, let's see what else we can add. Maybe some heat sink. Nah. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep using these ones. Um, so in here, this simple, uh, this simple shape or this simple oval um, allows you to, you know, cut into the model, but it also gives you a flat angle that then we can insert some, uh, some screws or something like that, like this. So I think this one looks pretty cool in there. Yeah, so I'm going to repeat the same object, but in here. Giving a bit of rotation as well. So we can place the same type of details in these two areas. Maybe a smaller one. This is much, much easier to do it if you have the live booleans enabled. I'm just toggling them on and off again. Clear the mask and let's see how this looks with all the booleans enabled. I'm also turning dynamic. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to do a quick save, actually. Dynamic, live booleans. All right. So once you enable the booleans, you realize it's not, it's not um, that extreme, the amount of details that we added. But I think this is looking this is looking good. So let's turn this off, dynamic off as well. And yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, and actually apply this so that we can move uh, with the other insert meshes because we have about, you know, uh, what is it, about 30 minutes or so. So I'm going to add a new, you know what, let me take these ones, the booleans. I'm going to um, duplicate them, chuck them into the original folder, and I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this one boolean and I'm going to put in here everything that I want to boolean in a single operation. So now I'm going to click on the cog icon and I'm going to go to boolean with subdivision. Let's actually enable smooth subdivision for the boolean mesh and let's click boolean with subdivision. So that shouldn't take too long. It's actually a pretty fast process and then we're going to end up with the kind of like the, you know, the Boolean mesh, the Boolean operation 
um, as a single mesh with all of these applied to it. All right, so that did the trick. Let's go ahead and select the result. Uh, hang on. Oh, my bad. Let's delete that. <laughs> I forgot to actually change this to subtraction in the new one uh, because remember I duplicated it. So let's do that again. Make sure the subdivision, the dynamic subdivision is enabled. Boolean width subdivision. Now it should be the same really. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, feel free to put them in the chat as well. Now we are in solo mode and now we end up with this sort of nice looks, uh, nice looking set of polygroups with the indentations and the inserts. So as I said, every time that you insert something or add anything into, into this area, uh, you'll end up with these different polygroups, uh, which is, you know, a great way to, to go about it uh, because then you can assign different materials and all that. And that's why I wanted to have um, a set of basic polygrouping before I move into um, booleans. Now this one didn't go through all the way, so I'm gonna isolate this and I'm going to select this bit and hide it. Invert the selection. Make sure I didn't grab anything weird and assign a different polygroup so that I can, you know, assign a single one. And I think that's the only one that was sort of problematic. The rest of them are pretty cool. All right. So this is looking uh, much better or like much better to much better in terms of the setup that you can do for a final render. Um, now let's go ahead and add a few, you know, screws, uh, screws and, and bolts and things like that. I'm going to turn this off. So it's going to be the same process, but now we don't have to have a, um, you know, like a, a separate mesh to add it because this is going to be an union mesh. So we can use something like IMM model kit. There's some good pieces in here. Uh, again, I'm going to keep it simple in some areas. So for example, this circular base, I'm just going to add it here. Make sure symmetry is on. We can drag. I'm going to turn off solo as well. Oh, hang on. Um, because I want to keep the dynamic subdivision, I probably need to add a cube as well. So let's do what we did before. Just a dummy file. Scale it down. Just chuck it inside. And now we can enable dynamic subdivision on this on this um, cube. All right. So, oops, symmetry again. Dynamic. And now whatever we insert in this is going to be set to dynamic subdivision, which is great. Okay. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and add a few more of these things. So here is just a good example of how you can combine insert meshes as Boolean to generate the spaces or the indentations and the crevices, and then use the, the normal insert brushes to just fill them up. So there is a, there's a nice screw here. Again, let's keep it simple. So I'm going to use something like this fastener and then just add it here. And if you want to keep the size consistent based on your brush size, actually, let's do it here click and drag and then I'm going to hold the control key and that basically keeps the size um, the same as my brush size and then I can just move and rotate this fastener so I can fasten this bit. There we go. And I'm going to move it down a bit. Just repositioning it. It works in the same way so um, it's just an insert brush so click and drag, hold control and maintain that sort of like size. Um, and because it is an insert brush, you can go ahead and bring the gizmo center to the unmask areas and tweak that. Um, all right. I'm gonna keep using the same size actually in some areas here. All 
the back is not very well defined anyway, so just adding a couple of details will probably help to bring it to a, a similar level of finish uh, or a polish. Okay, I think we need a couple of screws somewhere here. That's about it. Um, all right, so let's change these fastener. This one needs to be kind of like in a flat area, like this. This one could be a bit smaller, so we can apply them a bit more uh, loosely, maybe around the, the edges actually. And it's getting a little bit too much, but hopefully you get the idea. And these are tiny details, so it's not it's not overriding too much of the the overall design. So, not too worried about that. Uh, I'm gonna use, let's see, maybe this one. We can we can do something with this thing and play around with some areas that we can add some um, kind of like tubing. So, let's increase the brush size, keep it consistent. Uh, you can also you know, this one is sort of like sticking out too much, like too, too much. Uh, so what we can do is in this particular one, we can take this depth and for you guys should be under the brush palette, depth sub palette and push it in a bit more. So when you click and drag it, it's going to be more embedded. So let's see. All right. So that makes more sense. So we can have some kind of um, cable or tube going through this area and we can do something similar here. And this one have the same size, so the size is going to be consistent because I'm doing that um, clicking and dragging and holding control. And if we want to do the same thing around this area, I think it would be a cool way to add some kind of visual interest around here. That's also a good idea. So these ones will hold some kind of a cable. I think so, right? And this one will be probably a thicker tube. Um, I'm going to go ahead and find something where I can use as a as like the beginning of the tube <laughs> or as a yeah as a cylinder where I can fit in the tube so for example this pipe 8 that's a good option here so I can go ahead and click and drag this one bring in the gizmo and rotate that and maybe scale it in the z-axis so this is the I'm gonna use this one to fit in or fill in this area to fit in the tubes and the cables that come from this Let's see, there we go. So that's what I'm after. So I can fit in those cables in there. Uh, we can do the same thing here. So all of these ones go and flow into that one. Um, let's do the same process around here. All right, so bit by bit we're starting to to refine this and uh, making it look a, a little bit more interesting. It it just takes time to um, sorry, it doesn't take time to do these details. It takes time to decide where to put those details. 
and especially if you have the the primary and the secondary shapes and the form uh, already locked in and you're happy with those and how they look then this this stage is pretty relaxing because you don't have to really think about what you're doing in terms of um, you know changing the design too much you just need to focus on making sure that whatever you add is intentional or at least it makes sense um, before anything <laughs> Uh, but you don't have to worry about about the design. That's kind of like done in a way. Uh, this is a cool tube that we can add here, maybe with that indentation that we created. So just taking advantage of that space created with the boolean operation, and then just adding this tube in there. So this could be some kind of like laser, something like that. I'm going to replicate it here. And I kind of like the, the fact that these have different angles. So it's sort of like looking at everywhere or scanning areas or in different directions. All right. Let's add a couple of these vents in here. See how that looks. Uh, nah, it's a bit too too in your face that one. I think we're getting closer to to wrap it up, to be honest. There's no many details that I'd like to add. Um, this one is actually cool, this pipe, um, to add some kind of antenna. So you can drag it like this. And that is a, that's actually not too bad in there. Maybe just the placement is not right. Maybe around there. Just to have some, yeah, some kind of antenna. I think it's, it, it could be interesting. Um, let's just fill in these holes with some insert meshes as well. And just adding those things, um, again, it's very easy and it just feels a bit more, um, yeah, it feels a bit better, a bit, a bit more polished. Let's add a couple of these suspension or pistons somewhere here. But again, it's also about thinking about the um, the intentionality of the design, right? Like, why am I placing this one here? Maybe this area sort of like lifts when when this guy opens the the helmet, if it has a helmet. Although it's kind of like a mecha, but you know, sometimes these uh, these mechas they need some maintenance. So this is a, a way to to help out with that the opening of that hatch or whatever. This is. So it kind of makes sense. Um, also, you can add some pistons in here. This is actually a good place to add this, and that could help with the, the movement of the jaw. So you'll see all of this detailing process is actually really easy, but it's easy because we have already established the main, um, the main areas and the main shapes, the primary and the secondary. So this is just placing. All right, let's add a couple of screws in there to fasten that piston in place. Oops. I'm gonna make it consistent, so I'm gonna change the brush size and click, click and control. Okay. So 
So now I'm, uh, I'm going a little bit overboard <laughs> with the with the details, but um, I think I'm just adding them here at the back a little bit so that it feels more polished, to be honest. As like, you know, more, more interesting. Let's clear the, the mask and now we have, you know, something that looks pretty decent. Um, lots of details, but the but there's some areas that I haven't even touched, like the top area here or the, the center. So that will help us to maintain that that nice uh, the nice balance. Actually, this handle that I added is just rubbish. Let's get rid of that. Um, I'm gonna go to one of the ones here at the bottom. There's a lot of things here to choose from, and where is it? I just want to add a couple of fasteners here at the bottom, very tiny ones. Just to that piece in there and maybe here as well. Cool. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's um, call it call this one finish, as in the set of details. Um, let's do a quick render with Polyframe so that you see you see it. Um, also, I'm gonna increase the smoothness of Dynamic Subdivision so everything is way smoother. Uh, let's do a quick render. Uh, let's see the chat. Hang on. So I find it really difficult and stressful to create like you are doing. Maybe you should copy a little. Um, uh, what do you mean? As in what I'm doing right now? Not not sure what you're referring to, Mr. Sanson, as in what's stressful. Um, are those things you're scrolling through presets or things you have drawn? No, these ones are uh, insert meshes. They come with ZBrush. So this one is called the IMM Model Kit. So this is a brush that has all of these, all of these meshes that you can use to to add. Of course, you can create your own uh, set of insert meshes, and, and you know, but Sirius comes with a lot of these ones. Um, you can have buttons or um, you know these these machine parts as well. You know, you have a, a ton of different things that you can use in Sirius to generate this type of um, effect, like this turbine, for example. So, right. <laughs> um, anyway, so you have a lot of different options to to work with. Oh, let me just do the render again. I wanted to show you something. Um, Andrew, what would you use to put those uh, put do, put holes going through those holes holders on the on the jawline? Um, yeah. So that's what I want I want to show now. So. At this stage, we have polygroups, we have details, we have insert meshes, booleans, everything. Um, the next stage, at least for this specific design, is what Andrew just mentioned. So um, I want to put some some tubes so that it feels a bit more organic as well, uh, like exposed tubes. So I have this piston here, but I can take some, some tubes coming from this angle and joining underneath, for example, something like that. Uh, we can take this one and go all the way up here. And this one is the one that can connect. We can make a, a really complex one, maybe a few of those actually, like thin thin cables and it will feel a bit more organic. Um, and then we can split one of those around there. So this one is like a nice cable management, basically. So this one will be a bit thicker, like that. Um, that's something we can do. Uh, if anything, we can do another one just from here, going somewhere in the back, right? Um, so with this, we're gonna use um, a couple of techniques for this. The difference, the difference in the techniques. We have about 15 minutes, so um, I'm gonna show you the two techniques. One is the simple one, as in both are simple, but one is to create simple cables, and the other one is for more complex one. Um, so for example, these ones right here. 
I'm just going to use the curve brush. And for these ones right here that you sort of like need more control um, in the placement, I'm going to use C spheres. And I'm going to just show you a quick and simple technique to use C spheres to generate these. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it on this on this mesh. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it on that mesh. And or actually, let's go into solo mode and let's hide that little cube that we created. So I'm going to hide the, the cube that we originally made for this. And I'm going to split hidden. And now we just have uh, another cube. Well, the same cube, really. And in this cube is the one that I'm going to use for the for the tubes. So uh, I'm going to select the curve tubes. I'm going to chuck in the stroke palette on the right. And I'm going to open up the functions and modifiers, uh, maybe the functions later. But um, I'm going to click on lock start. So that way, whenever I click at the beginning, that's going to be my start and it's going to be locked in. And I can just move it a little bit more freely. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag around there. So now we have symmetry and we have locked the start and the end. So I'm going to click on the, the beginning of this curve and I'm going to establish where it should start like that there we go and then I'm gonna take the end and I'm gonna place it maybe around there now um, I can extend the curve by just going over the last bit of the curve and then you see that I get this this red line that it snaps into the into the line so basically hovering over this area will show up, uh, will make this um, red line show up. So this red line means that you are going to continue the curve. So again, hover over and then continue the curve there. Oops. Let's do it again. Oh, I'm clicking somewhere. One more time. Click and drag. Ah, what is going on? Hmm. It should be a yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, all right. So now I have this set in place. I'm gonna actually place it a little bit better around there. So this is going to be my the end of my curve, and this is gonna be the beginning of my curve. Right. So now I can go ahead and lock the end. And now I have those locked in. I can go ahead and place this a little bit better since the, the beginning and the end are locked in. Now, if I want to have more the ability to, to refine the, the size a bit more and place a little bit better, we can go ahead and use the uh, elastic or liquid. So I'm going to use elastic. The difference between elastic and liquid is that the elastic will give you a sharper point wherever you drag. It's kind of like a rubber band. With the liquid, is is a little bit more, it's a little bit softer. So I'm going to use the elastic. I'm going to click, and as I move, my start and my the end of my curve are locked in. But I can add more geometry as I move this, right? And I can also click on the curve, hold Control, sorry, hold Shift after clicking. And then I can smooth the curve. So this is super handy to just, you know, be able to place this a little bit better. And then smooth the curve a little bit. All right. So I have those, those tubes working but you know maybe you want to do um, a couple more so what I can do now is I can take a snapshot or basically drop that um, drop that tube in there and then I'm gonna still keep the same curve that I generated so that I can continue creating a new brush basically or, sorry <clears throat> a new tube in a different position so I can click on this snapshot which I have mapped to my number five in my keyboard so if I click snapshot then 
basically Sirius just dropped that cube in there, so that's locked in place. But we still have the same the same um, curve with the same tube that we can rotate and, and continue playing around with. So I'm gonna turn off elastic so that I don't extend it or anything. And I'm gonna reposition the beginning of the next curve, and you'll see we have the the orange one already locked in. I'm gonna take the beginning of this other curve and I'm gonna place it somewhere somewhere there alright and now we can just place this a bit better so I'm gonna click and hold shift to smooth the curve and now I'm gonna enable elastic again So this is just a, cool, a quick and cool way to have more control over your curves. Uh, and this works for everything, not just the curve tubes. All right, so click somewhere. And now we have the tubes in there. So that's uh, technique number one. This is the easy one, just a curve brush, uh, sorry, curve tube brush. Uh, with some of the settings here, I maintain a nice set of, um, you know, tubes, consistent tubes that you can place and all that. Um, let's go ahead and do the other one just to wrap it up. Uh, hang on. So you're creating the fly like you're doing. Ah, oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I will probably just copy a few things just to get ideas flowing. But if you collect a lot of reference, that also helps, um, you know, make more informed decisions about the design, I guess. A brush, or do you have to pay that type of kit? Not sure what you mean. Um, if you're talking about the insert meshes, that they come with ZBrush. Hi, can you tell me how to weld the ends of the curve brush? They are welded. They don't. You don't have to weld them. They're part of the same. They're part of the brush. If you're using the curve two brush. Uh, can you do this in core? Um, yeah, I think the Zbrush Core, the new version of Zbrush Core, you have insert meshes now. So absolutely, I think so. Don't quote me on that, but I think you do. Or I'm pretty sure you do. Or it's the Sculptures Pro, maybe the one that they added. Mm. Anyway, so let me just show you the the other technique, which is pretty powerful as well. I'm gonna go ahead and append a C sphere. So now I have a C sphere here. And I'm gonna place it. Mm, I'm gonna place it on this side. I'm gonna work on uh, on this side. is fine. So I'm gonna scale it down to the size uh, I wanna use for my tubes, roughly. And let's go ahead and move it in place. So I'm gonna start from the from this little area here. Maybe scale it down as well. So this is going to be the beginning of my more complex curve or tube. All right, somewhere somewhere there should be fine. And again, this is just a C sphere, so I can go ahead and. Draw a new one. Oops. If I hold Shift, Siri is going to create the same size as the original one. So I can do that. So click and drag. Draw, click, hold Shift. And then it's going to be the same size. So I'm going to do a couple just clicking, holding shift to make sure it's the same size, and dragging. And I'll tweak them in a second. I know these ones are uh, overlapping and all that. Just wanna make sure I get these ones right first, like the, the main ones. Oh no, no. Thought it was gonna crash. And then another one here. And these are the ones that I'm gonna connect here. So 
So let's do a couple more. So that one goes there. I think we're going to have time to finish this one anyway. Hopefully. Click, hold shift to maintain the, the same size. And then another one here. So you'll see with, um, with C-spheres, it's really, really easy to have control over the placement. And of course, uh, we need to go ahead and, and tweak this. But I just needed to have some so that I can start adding more of these C-spheres, whatever I need to. And don't worry about the size. Um, we're going to tweak that later. The C-spheres actually not, are not going to be the tube. They're just going to be the guide that I'm going to use for the tubes. I'll explain that in just a second. All I'm doing here is just adding additional C-spheres so that I can place this a bit better, like the tubing. And of course, make it a, a bit more rounded, those those tubes. And remember, these ones are not going to be tubes. They're actually kind of like thin or small wires. Um, that's why I'm using just the C-sphere to establish kind of like the flow of the cable, so the direction. But then I'm going to use them uh, or use the C-spheres just as a as a way to guide those cables. Just a couple more C-spheres in some areas just to make it a bit more rounded or like softer the curve. All right, so that's our C-sphere. Um, we can go ahead and now create a tube out of these C-spheres. So I'm going to go to the um, adaptive skin, make sure that Dynamesh is set to zero so that it doesn't Dynamesh this or create a tube with Dynamesh. Uh, I'm going to take the density to, to 1 and do a quick preview. So this is what we end up with, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, a pretty decent uh, set of, two of topology or placement of the topology um, or flow. <laughs> and then I'm going to click on Make Adaptive Skin. So now I'm going to copy the new adaptive skin into my working file. I want to take my C-spheres that I don't need anymore, but I want to keep them into my originals. And now I have this mesh that works pretty well. Uh, I'm going to also duplicate it just in case. And if you want to keep this, actually, what you can do is maybe do a quick smooth. So let's uh, do a polish. So that polishes things. And then you can use the inflate brush to sort of like, oops. Actually, this could be a, a simple way to do, just do it. Use the inflate brush to inflate it uh, or deflate it. So now we have those cables in there. Um, the other technique that I was going to show you is you can mask um, polygroups. So that's what I'm going to do because that's what I was originally planning to do. But this is another technique, right, or another way to, to go about it. And we can actually push this in and then use any move brush or any other technique to, to place this a little bit better, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select this one, go into solo mode. And I'm going to assign a single polygroup, Control W. I'm also going to polish this a tiny bit. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of some of the caps, or well, not some of the caps, the caps of this. Make sure I did the right thing. Yep. And delete hidden. All right. So with the select lasso, what I'm going to do is assign different polygroups to this. So holding control and click, uh, control and shift and click. Same thing in here. <clears throat> and I'm going to group, auto group, sorry. Invert that and auto group as well. So now I have a set of different polygroups almost in each face. Um, now the idea is that we can also frame 
these uh, the the curves around these polyframes. So let me just explain what I'll do. Um, in this in the in the stroke palette, you have these curve curve functions, and you have border polygroups and crease edges. So I'm going to turn everything except polygroups, which is what we just did in here, and I'm going to click on frame mesh. So now automatically we have all of these lines that are actually curves uh, just framed, and all we have to do is select whatever curve we want. Uh, I'm going to stick with the with the curve tubes, or maybe the, do the multi multi curve tube so I can do more than one at a time. And now I'm going to establish the size of my wires just by changing the brush size. And I'm going to click on one, and that because I'm using the multi tube, is going to add all of those wires at once, which is ideal. So now we can go ahead and delete those curves, um, and I can go ahead as well, and I'm going to hide the Let's do a uh, auto group again. So auto group, and I'm going to hide the original mesh. So this is the one that we uh, created from the C spheres. Invert that. Delete hidden. Not well points, sorry. Delete hidden. So now we have a set of cables, right? That look pretty, pretty cool and pretty um, detailed. And we can go ahead and use the, for example, move topological that is going to respect the continuity of the topology to place these ones a bit better. So let's go ahead and take this one, for example, and push it in. Oh, no. <sighs> let's hope. Let's hope I didn't lose that. Anyway, now we're finishing up anyway. Um, I'm pretty confident Sirush did a quick save. Let's hope for the best. Yeah, not too bad. I think we have something. There we go. Do not panic. Still, still work. Uh, worked fine. All right. So let's go into solo mode. Uh, not solo mode. Into polyframe. And I was using the move brush, but for some reason, sorry, the move topological. For some reason, it just crashed in there. It shouldn't. I mean, it's it's a pretty simple operation. Um, Oh, uh, hang on. Let's try it again. There we go. All right, so now with the move topological, I'm just going to place these things a bit better. So my aim right now is to make them fit within the, the holes that I created so that it feels more realistic. And then I'm going to worry about um, just splitting some and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, this technique is a, is a pretty handy one to create complexity um, with, this, with these tubes or these cables. Um, and it's just using the C-sphere so you have a lot of control before, um, you know, before you commit to do anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start pushing things out now, maybe with a smaller brush size, actually. And that's going to really sell the effect, just to make it, you know, not as perfect. But again, there's many there's many ways to approach the same thing in Sivers, like I've mentioned before. Um, I just think this one is uh, an easy and cool way to go about it. There's other other methods, of course. For example, you can you can create a custom tube brush that has all of these tubes already in there, and and that just no you know saves you the time of creating the C sphere. But I think the C sphere approach is a, a little bit better. Uh, in terms of how much control it gives you.
All right, so I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and do a quick mirror and mirror and weld. So now we have that in a separate uh, tool that is uh, mirrored. I'm going to enable dynamic just to make them a bit softer. And I think we are done. So I'm going to do a quick render with polyframe so you see how everything is looking. Uh, let's do a quick save as well. And do a render. And or actually, let's do a render with the polyframe with the skin shade. Alrighty. So I think that covers what I wanted to show you. Um, I'm not gonna continue with the with this guy. I think it's it's fine as it is. <laughs> we we're using it as an example to show you a few techniques. Um, if I have time, I will do the body, which I actually literally haven't touched since the first stream where I just blocked it in, and then just finished up the um, the concept in Photoshop or, or Keyshot or anything else. All right. So let me know, guys, if you have any questions, uh, last minute questions. Otherwise, I'll have to wrap it up right now. Uh, hopefully, those techniques that I just showed you are somehow helpful. Um, if you haven't tried it, at least I think they're, um, they're a good way to you know, get into the habit of learning new things and apply them to your workflow because these techniques also work for something that is not hard surface, right? Uh, everything that I showed you can be applied to a more organic, more organic stuff. Um, this is not like super hard surface, right? It's a still relatively unpolished surfaces. Let's do it again. There we go. Um, but for the most part, I think it it covers what I wanted to show you. Um, just as a quick reminder, um, or for those of you who just joined us or recently joined us, um, there are a couple of things or a couple of a couple of announcements that I have. The first one is that the the digital clay pack is almost ready. Uh, that's, uh, if you go to my Instagram, I've been sharing this type of things. So this is almost done. Um, it is a set of brushes that allows you to recreate the, the you know, the look and feel of real clay, uh, but obviously digitally. Oh, I didn't play. Anyway, so that's almost done. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm hopefully ready to make it available this week for you guys. Uh, and the other thing is the contest. So let me just show you the the brushes really quick. Oh, they're not absolutely final. I'm still tweaking them. Um, but this should give you a good idea what I do. So clay. There's a there's a bunch of things, but you know, for example, this one allows you to recreate the, you know, the idea of like if you have this sphere as a perfect sphere in 3D, but you want to make it feel more like um, yeah, like clay, you can start like smudging the clay with the, the thumbs. So this gives you the same result, and it works like a sculpting brush. So it is pretty cool. Um, this one is one of my favorites. <laughs> um, it's didn't I mean it spent a lot of time tweaking it until I got to this stage uh, but just by doing that boom we have the <laughs> we have the this kind of like this look of smudging the the clay a little bit like that uh, then other ones that are pretty cool as well uh, the actually let's let's do this right just to generate some base um, for the clay and then there's another one called the wet brush this one is probably one of my favorites, um, and then this is—it works like a brush with uh, with water, basically. So you can polish the surface at the same time as, you know, it feels like it's water that you're polishing with water. So I I absolutely love this one. I've been using it quite a bit um, to generate the the look and feel, and it's really good. Um, and then the other one, uh, I mean. I'm not gonna go through all of them. I just wanna show you some other stuff like this. This adds like pieces of clay. So if you have a, a clean mesh and then you wanna add some pieces of clay, this one gives you that effect. Like just adding volume, but very, very sharp edges. Like if this was just pieces of clay that you're adding on top of your mesh. Um, and they're all work, they're all work as, um, 
as a as a sculpting brush. So they're not alphas. Um, they're not. Well, they 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 have alphas. Some of them. They're not like click and drag alphas. Basically, you you can work them as the standard brush or the clay brush. Uh, there is this knife brush that is super super handy. It has a very soft effect depending on the on the pressure that you applied or a very harsh one. Um, but you can go over the same areas without destroying kind of like the initial height. Uh, so this one is really good to do some markings and cuts and indentations like that. Um, you know, and the the rest is just um, another way uh, another ways to achieve the same result. Like this one, for example, this much simple is similar to what I showed you at the beginning. It's a bit simpler, but it has a lot of texture and it uses one of the latest um, features in ZBrush, which is the no back and forth. So uh, I can just click and drag, and then I cannot go back. So if I go back, it doesn't do anything. So this one is just kind of like adding this sort of, you know, smudges of clay all around. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun uh, de developing these ones. Definitely uh, something that, again, I don't know how useful it would be for, for you guys, uh, how useful these uh, brushes are. I developed them for myself, to be honest, to, because I really like the, the look and feel of the real clay and, and achieving that in ZBrush is really easy with these brushes. Um, so I'm gonna make them available soon uh, with a bunch of other stuff. I'm gonna do a nice little pack um, that you guys uh, will be able to to get from the Zero Guides website, and um, yeah, that's that's about it. So, uh, Ibrahim, how is it made? though? do you mean the the brushes? Uh, if you're if you're referring to the brushes, how I made them, um, just pretty much the same way that I made any other brush that I do in ZBrush. So a lot of um, a lot of research in terms of getting an understanding of what I want to achieve, and then a lot of testing back and forth. Uh, I send it, I send the pack or like the previous, the beta version to some of my friends that um, are really good sculptors, and they try them out. They say this doesn't work, or I don't know what this is doing, or anything like that, and then send them back to me, and I'll refine them. Uh, so I'm just in the last stage. So I literally just got them back. I'm refining certain things, uh, packing them all up, and adding a few other stuff that are really cool bonuses for the pack that I'm doing. And yeah, I'll make them available pretty soon. Um, yeah, other than that, what I was saying before is that the the contest, the Zeroge Guide contest, the first one of the year is going to be also available or ready for you guys uh, to join if you want. Um, hopefully at the end of this week, I'm hoping. And this is just something that I wanted to show you. This is the panel of judges for this contest. So again, we have Miguel Guerrero, Jama, um, Magdalena, Pascal Blanche, Glocal Longi, and Tim King. So there's no need to say anything else. I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm really, really pumped about this. And also Pixelogic is one of the sponsors. Um, so you can expect some pretty pretty awesome prizes as well as Wacom and the 3D Concept Addis. So you might get, if you win, you can get a a fully, um, you know, a full access to the, to the Extra Mile uh, course, um, which, you know, that's when uh, what we're doing, what we've been doing lately, in terms of this type of thing. So this is a, a live workshop that we did with the students. Alrighty, I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Uh, thanks so much for joining, and I will do a quick render of this later and post it somewhere so you guys have a, this as a as a reference. Um, but I think we did. Um, you know, I, I showed you whatever I, what the techniques that I wanted to show you really, uh, which are you know the detailing with booleans and insert meshes and the, these wires and that sort of thing. So hopefully you found this useful and um, keep an eye on your email. If you are part of my email list, I will send out all the details about the, the contest and and the rest of the stuff. I'd like the, the clay brushes if you're interested as well. All right, take it easy guys. And thanks again for joining us today. I'll see you next week.